This month in Outer Banks history, the Burnside Expedition led a Union takeover of Confederate forts at the Battle of Roanoke Island. In the early stages of the Civil War, Confederate forces held control of several strategic waterways, including the sounds of eastern North Carolina. One particularly important area was Roanoke Island. If Union forces could take control of the island, they would force the Confederates to mount an amphibious attack for which they were ill-prepared, and naval superiority on the island put numerous points on the North Carolina coast at risk. By August of 1861, Federal troops had taken control of the forts at Hatteras Inlet, and the Confederacy sent troops to Roanoke Island to prepare for an eventual assault. Meanwhile, Brigadier General Ambrose E. Burnside was assigned to lead an expedition of Union forces to invade North Carolina from the sea. This would come to be known as the Burnside Expedition. Burnside's troops set sail from Fort Monroe near the Chesapeake Bay on January 11, 1862, headed for Cape Hatteras. Several Union vessels were lost to bad weather on the journey. Still others had to turn back due to being too heavy to traverse the shallow waters of Hatteras Inlet. Nearly one month after embarking on their voyage, Union forces finally assembled in Pamlico Sound. They reached the southern end of Roanoke Island by February 6th, but weather delayed their attack until February 7th. The bombardment began at noon. The weakness of the Confederate position soon revealed itself. Of the four Confederate forts standing in the vicinity of the Union fleet, only one, Fort Bartow, was able to fire its guns. The fighting that day was intense, but neither side suffered substantial losses. Nearly 10,000 Union soldiers had made it ashore by nightfall. The next day, February 8th, Union forces advanced north, eventually meeting some 1,400 Confederate troops. A firefight ensued, ultimately ending when Burnside's men launched a two-pronged attack to dismantle the Confederate defensive line. During this maneuver, Union soldiers were able to traverse the so-called impenetrable swamp to their left to force a Confederate retreat. Confederate Colonel Henry M. Shaw was forced to surrender all his troops, guns, and forts to the Union. All told, 2,500 men were taken prisoner, although casualties were comparatively light, with a total of 413 men killed, wounded, or missing between the two sides. The island remained under federal control for the remainder of the war. And when the Burnside Expedition ended in July 1862, so too did North Carolina's position as an active center of the Civil War. To learn more about the Battle of Roanoke Island or any other topic in Eastern North Carolina history, come visit us at the Outer Banks History Center. We're located at Roanoke Island Festival Park across from the downtown Manio waterfront.